All right, party people, welcome back to lesson two of the SwiftUI to-do list app. In the last video, we did some basic project setup, hooked up Firebase to this Xcode project and created some empty Swift files. And in this video, we're gonna actually start building some stuff out. So before we jump into things, hit that like button below, subscribe if you're into SwiftUI and let's continue. So we're going to build out the login screen, the view, login view for our application. And this is what we want to show when our user, you know, launches the app and they're not signed in. So let's get to it. So here we have our main view. If you guys recall, this is the view that we are opening up to when our app launches inside of our window group. If you recall, we changed it to main view. And inside of here, we have just an image and our hello world um our hello world text so instead of this hello world text and image what i'd like to do is show our login view while we build it so we actually already created this login view swift ui view on the left hand side here so we can just delete that and toss in a login view like so we are also going to wrap this login view inside of a navigation view. Now this navigation view will allow us to show and dismiss a registration view uh, if we need to, right? When the user taps on register. I'm also gonna delete that padding there and we can jump into this login view. You can hit the file on the left or you can command click on login view and hit jump to definition. And this will basically just open up wherever that uh, object lives, which is in the login view Swift file. So cool, good deal. Now in our login view, if we actually open up the simulator, let's take a look at what we're uh, aiming to build here. I have the finished app on here as well. Our login view, let me open this up and let me just sign out basically has this nice title at the top, a subtitle, this like wonky pink background thing. And then we've got our form to sign in. And then at the bottom, we also have some text about if you're new here, you can create an account. So this is a view and the user interface that we're gonna attempt to make starting off with our header. So let me actually move this right next to Xcode so we can have something to reference and we can start building it out. So by just looking at this, we can see that the elements are arranged vertically. So my instinct is to start by using a vertical stack. And let's put some comments in here. At the top, we're gonna want a header. We're gonna want the login form itself with our fields as well as our button. And then we're gonna want the create account jazz you know, below that. So let's work on this header. So for this header, we want basically a Z stack because we have this pink thing. And then on top of it, we have two labels that are vertically uh, oriented. So a Z stack will enable us to do that. So let's create a Z stack here. And this Z stack is going to start by having a rounded rectangle. And maybe we'll make a corner radius of, let's try a corner radius of just 10. Maybe we actually don't need this because we actually are gonna rotate this. So let's actually just get rid of that, make it zero. Now that we've got this here, we want to set a color for it. So we're gonna say foreground color is gonna be pink. And if you see on the right hand side of our window, we do have Xcode uh, automating basically the canvas update. We can see our preview, which is really nice. So now that we have got this, um, we want to adjust the heights. We also wanna rotate it and we wanna move it up. So let's, let's do all of that. So in our Z stack, we've got this here. Let's adjust the height of this whole thing. So I wanna say frame is gonna have a width and a height. Uh, so we'll say our width here, let's just do 100 for a second, and we'll say the height is 300. Now, the width should basically be um, wider than the entirety of the screen, because once we rotate it, we don't want it to be cut off. So what we can actually do here is we can say, hey, use the current screens bounds dot width, so basically our main screen, this iPhone screen, use its width, and I'm gonna multiply it by three. So it is definitely wider than the available screen size here, and you'll see momentarily why we're doing that. So good deal. So now that we have this here, what I want to do is in the Z stack, we're gonna add a vertical stack here, and we're gonna have two elements, right? The first one is going to be a title, so we'll say to do uh, list and the next one is going to be a subtitle which I guess we'll say get things done obviously put here whatever you would like 
and we want to style both of these labels a little bit. So let's make both the foreground color on these white. This top one, I will go and make bold. And for the top one, we're also going to set the font size. We'll use a system size of perhaps 50. And then for the bottom one, maybe we'll use 30. These are numbers that I'm literally just making up. So if you wanna use a different number, by all means, don't hesitate to. So cool, so we now have this header thing here. It is a Z stack. Let me toss a spacer at the bottom of our entire V stack to push this guy up. Let's make sure it does indeed move up. All right, it does move up, cool. Now we wanna rotate this pink background rounded rectangle. And luckily there's an easy way to do this. We can actually just apply a rotation effect which can take in an angle. And we're gonna say an angle gets created with degrees and maybe we'll do negative 15. I think that's the opposite direction of what we want. Let's try 15 actually. But you can actually use any degree in here. So cool, we've now created this. And to get the effect that I've got going on in this final product here, where it's kind of from the top of the device, we just wanna move this pink thing up. So we want the offset to be negative in the Y direction. So we'll say offset, and what I'll use is Y, and let's try negative 50 and see if that looks right. Probably need a smidge more, so let's do maybe, uh, let's try like a negative like 100 and see what that looks like. Alrighty, so that's 1,000, that's a little too much, obviously. So negative 100 looks like it's okay, but our text is now white on white since it's a little too low. So we'll probably want to move that a smidge up. Um, instead of actually moving the rounded rectangle up, I kind of want to try moving this entire thing up. Okay, so that looks a lot better, but our text is now a little too close to the notch up here. So what we're gonna wanna do is just move this down. Either we can use offset or we can use padding. I'm gonna choose to use padding for top and just make it 30. And if you look at that, we actually have this header basically done. So we have to-do list, we have a nice subtitle, and it's looking pretty good. So one thing that we are going to do often throughout this series is start abstracting stuff when it becomes a little involved. So in this case, our header is a little involved here. So let me grab this whole thing and we're gonna abstract it into a header view. So we obviously don't have this header view thing here. So let's create a new file. It's going to be a SwiftUI file. And that's not SwiftUI, let's make sure it is. Yep, SwiftUI view. And go ahead and call this a header view. And inside of this, just paste on that Z stack and all that jazz we created in the previous file. If you hit Command B and Command Option P for Pinocchio, basically, just to make sure we don't confuse our letters there, you should see that header view in here. And back in our login view, all this is a lot cleaner now. So let's continue onwards. Let's make our form. To create a form, we can use, surprise, surprise, a form. A form is going to have a few text fields, uh, one text field and one secure field. The first argument will be the placeholder. And the second argument will be a binding that we will create. So I'm just gonna create it in this for the time being. So here we'll say at state var text is an empty string. Let me actually make two of these. So we'll say email and password. Now we are gonna move this stuff to the view model, but just bear with me for the time being. So here we're gonna say dollar, dollar email. Copy and paste this, and this one will now become a secure field. Now for both of these, we are gonna set a field style. So text field style, and what we're looking for, if you just type in field style, you'll see a lot of the available ones right down there uh, in the dropdown. So we're gonna look for the rounded variant, and I'm just gonna close that left panel so we have a little more room to work with. Alrighty, and if you hit Command Shift P, you should actually see your fields here. They're a little difficult to see. So let's actually see this in dark mode as well. At the bottom of our canvas, we can hit this little uh, three iPhone, uh, three by two grid thing, and we can say, show me different color variants. And this will actually populate the light mode and dark mode variants here. So you can actually click and see them both live as you develop. 
So that's pretty cool. Let's create a continue button or a login button. So we're gonna create a button and the variant we want is with an action and a label. For the action, we're gonna say attempt login, obviously nothing going on in the action quite yet. And in the label, this is basically what we want our button to look like. We are going to have a Z stack and this is going to be a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of 10. We'll give it a foreground color of blue. And then on top of that, I'm gonna have a text uh, label that says login. We will make this bold indeed. And if you hit Command Shift P to refresh your preview, you should start to see your button, but we don't actually see the text because we do need to say it is a foreground color of white. By default, it'll take a tint color, which just so happens to be blue. So cool, so we've got our login screen coming along pretty nicely. And finally, to wrap this up, what we'll want is that it'll create a count blurb at the bottom. So for new users, um, like us actually, we're gonna create a way to navigate to the registration page. So down here, we'll create a vertical stack, and in our vertical stack, we're gonna have a label that says new around here, question mark, and then we'll have uh, a button that says create an account. And here we will basically say show uh, registration. So let's just make sure it does indeed pop up. Okay, it definitely does show up. And let me go and just add a little bit of bottom padding here. Maybe we'll say 50. That way it'll just you know push it up a smidge. And let's uh, give this a run in our simulator and make sure it actually does look nice. So cool, this is our screen. If we hit the home button, we can actually compare it to our final product and they basically look identical barring some padding differences. Let's click on create account, nothing happens. Let's actually hook this up to open the registration screen and then we will wrap this video up there after a brief overview and summary of what we did. So we actually created this login view inside of a uh, navigation view. So if you open up the main view and pro tip, you can hit command shift O to search for any file in your project. You'll see we wrapped this in a navigation view. Uh, why did we do that? We did that because we want to be able to navigate uh, to another view, in this case, registration. So let me actually move this navigation uh, view. Whoops, let's move that navigation view. Let's go back to Xcode. Uh, into login view itself. So I'll come inside of here and with this V stack, I'm gonna cut the whole thing and we're gonna nest it inside of a navigation view. Alrighty, now that we've got this here, we can actually say, hey, when we tap on a button to go to create an account, we actually wanna go to a particular destination. So we can do this in a variety of ways, but one of the simplest ways is by using a navigation link, and we want the variant that has a title and a destination. So we're actually gonna delete this button and move that string here, and this will more or less show a button, but we're gonna be able to say, hey, once we tap it, go to the register view. And let's just see the preview here, and let's see what it looks like, it should look basically exactly the same as our button from before. It's actually indistinguishable. The difference is when I tap on it, we should be able to go to our, um, our registration view, our destination. So let's give this a run in our simulator, make sure it's all working and we'll be in good shape. Cool, awesome. So we definitely are able to navigate here. Um, we obviously don't have a nice UI here quite yet, but we also have a back button up here. I can tap into the uh, field here and we do actually get our keyboard. We might wanna put this in a scroll view so our uh, field is not overlapped by the keyboard. Um, one other thing that I will call out before wrapping up here is you can indeed change the way that your text fields in the form look. Um, I've used both the rounded fields before. You can also use the default style if you prefer. The default style looks quite nice as well. Let's just give this a refresh in our preview here. There are slight variants and you do wanna make sure you don't forget to change this to password and the binding here to dollar password as well. 
Alrighty, let's give this a build and run. Let's make sure this is still looking good. All right, it looks pretty good. So I actually like the way this looks a little better because the entire form's background color is uh, used for the fields as well, which ends up looking a lot nicer. Maybe on this button down here, we'll add a smidge of padding. But I digress, you can sit and optimize it and make it look exactly how you'd like your heart desires. So this is our login view and none of it is functional yet as designed. Appreciate y'all sticking around. I will see you guys in the next lesson where we'll continue building out this app.